Hi, in the previous two part video, we looked at how we can extend S demand connectivity to AWS using the transit gateway in a manual way. In this video, we will look at using the Cisco Cloud on RAM for multi cloud automated workflow to do the same. The topology we will use is similar to what we used earlier. There are two spoke VPCs already configured with the required subnets and route tables. There is also an on premise S demand router connected to the S demand fabric. We will now use the multi cloud workflow, which will create a TG tablet spin up two C8000V instances in the transit VPC and configure the necessary connections to exchange routing information via BGP and establish end-to-end -end connectivity. With that, let's begin. Let's go to templates. Let's choose our predefined templates and clone the TGW template. Let's quickly take a look at this template. Now this template has basically the transport VPN and the transport VPN interface, and it also has a management VPN and management interface. There's no service VPN, but that will be created by the core. Let's go and attach our devices. Let's pass on the necessary parameters. Let's call this AWS one. Let's give the system IP as six 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 seventy one. The site ID as six hundred six one. Update. Let's pass on the parameters for the second router. Call it AWS 2, 6.6.72. So configuration has been scheduled to be pushed when the device comes online. Let's begin our multi cloud workflow. Let's click on the cloud icon and choose Cloud Owner from Multi Cloud. This screen basically walks you through the workflow. We'll first do the setup of our accounts, then we'll discover our host VPCs, and then create, we'll create our necessary cloud gateways and then provide the connectivity. Let's go ahead and first associate our cloud account. Provider is AWS. Let's give it a name. Let's call this Naran demo. Let's choose yes for cloud gateway. And I'm going to log into the AWS using the keys. You can also use IAM roles, but I'm just going to use API keys for this demo. So let me copy the API keys. This is done. Let's go and click add. So now we have a cloud account associated. Now let's go to the next step of defining global settings. So let's click on cloud global settings. Let's click on add. And here you can choose how you want to connect to the transit gateways. We will use the VPN based connectivity for end to end IPsec. Buffer image will be BYOL. And let's choose the image as 1762. The instance size for this demo, I'll leave it at 3T medium. Let's give it a subnet pool. This is the transit VPC pool. Let's create the PGP offset. So this will be the ASN number that will be used. We'll use 64520. We will disable the program default route towards uh, the TGW uh, because we are using uh, non default route tables. So we'll program the route tables ourselves. And let's use the IPsec as an encapsulation type for site to site connectivity. These are global parameters and you can change it if required. Now we're done with the second step. Let's go ahead and discover our host VPCs. Let's click on discover host private networks. 
it basically lists, lists down all the VPCs that you have on your account. Let's go ahead and choose our VPCs for the demo, which is VPC 1 and 2 in the EU West 2. Add tags. Tagging is a way of associating our VPCs towards the TGW and establishing the connectivity towards these tagged VPCs. Let's call this AWS bar. Let's just click add. Now this creates a tag in the AWS VPCs. So let's go back to our cloud on RAM for multi cloud workflow. And now let's go ahead and create a cloud gateways. Now let's give the cloud gateway a name. Let's call this AWS TGW Core. Let's choose our account, which would be in our end demo. The region will be EU West 2. I'm going to leave this as such keys. So I'm going to choose all these parameters through the global settings we defined. And we'll just specify our UUIDs for the 2C8000V instances. Let's click Add. For this workflow in the backend, we'll use APIs to create the necessary parameters within the AWS Cloud. Uh, this will take some time, so I'm going to just pause the video and come back once this is done. The configurations have been successfully pushed. Let's quickly view them. As you can see, it creates the necessary TGWs. It also creates the C8000V instances in the transit VPC. Let's quickly log into our AWS console to check these. So there here, you can see that it created the AWS TGW core VPC. This is the VPC where the two CSR C8000V instances are instantiated. Let's go to our transit gateways. This is the transit gateway that was created by the workflow. And within the attachments, you will see that it actually has created the two VPC attachments. It also has created the route tables and the associations to those route tables and propagations as well. And we can see that the TGW is now learning the VPC routes. Let's go to the EC2 dashboard. Here you can see that you have the two C8000V instances that have spun up. Let's go back to our pmanage dashboard and do the last step of extending the connectivity. Let's go to Cloud Runner for Multi-Cloud. And here you can see that we have the two devices. If you click on it, it will show you the two instances that have been instantiated. Let's go to Cloud Connectivity. Let's edit our cloud connectivity and now associate our tags to the respective VPNs. Uh, the VPNs are discovered based on what's the configuration that are available within your system. So let's associate that to VPN 1. And this will again take some time, so I'm going to just pause the video and come back once it is done. The configuration is now done. Let's quickly go to our AWS console and look at customer gateways. You'll see that you have two customer gateways. Those are the IPC connections towards the TGW from our C8000 instances. Let's go to site to site VPN connections. Now we have two VPN connections. Let's click on them and you'll then go to tunnel details. You'll find that there are two tunnels, two IPsec tunnels that are up between the TGW and our instances. Let's go to our transit gateway route tables. You will find there is another route table that was instantiated and has the necessary associations and propagations in place. If you look at the routes, uh, it's started to learn the routes which are which is 1.0, which is from the on-premise router. The last step is to basically add a route to our VPC route tables towards the TGW for accessing the on-premise networks. So let's go to route tables. Let's go to our VPC route table. Let's go to routes and edit routes. Let's add a route. Uh, for now, let's just add a default route pointing to a TGW. So 
similarly let's do it for second vpc let's edit and add routes routes have been added let's quickly go to our device let's go to on premise device let's go to real time and look for OMP received routes now you can see that you're receiving the VPC routes which are 10 10 11 0 and 10 10 12 0 so these are being learned by BGP from the TGW and redistributed to OMP so that it is learned by the on-premise router. Let's check the connectivity from on-premise router to the instances in, in these VPCs. So this is the device of the on-premise. Let's quickly grab the IP address of the AWS instance. So if we look at VPC1 instance, and so IP address is 10, 10, 11, 20, Let's quickly do a ICMP check. And you will see successful communication. I've already opened the required security groups for the instances. Similarly, let's try connectivity to the second instance. This is 10, 10, 12, 1, 59. And you'll see successful communication from one premise router towards AWS. Thus, you can see how easy it is to use the Cisco Cloud on RAM for multi cloud workflow. To seamlessly extend your SD-WAN fabric from your on-premise to the cloud without having to do any complex manual configurations. That's it for this demo, and thanks for watching.